Madam Speaker, what we bring from second opposition in this debate is two extension points. First of all, I'm going to talk about post-war narratives and why we think they're very important to have and how we, as Western democracies, have only been able to become more humane to engage in less wars because we have awful narratives from soldiers coming home telling us about that. The second point of extension is going to be why we think it's in the absolute interest of democratic states to not go with this proposal, both if they want to do better in war and secondly also if they want to be able to use their soldiers as first government said and said we have to be able to use them and so on and so forth, why we think it is not in the state's interest that is fighting a war to do that because it diminishes the ability to fight good and proper wars. Before that, um, First of all, uh, a point of clarification on first government, and second of all, rebuttal to the extension we just heard. First of all, on first government, we think they contradict themselves in a lot of the points that they bring forward. Because in some points, they say, you know what, um, if you don't have fear, you can, uh, you can react much faster. Then they say, if you react too fast, you commit atrocities. Then they say, if you have fear, you second guess um, the, the, the commands that you get. Now you can act faster, but if you act fast, then you're more likely to commit genocide because you don't see the humanity of the other side. We think this is a little bit of a contradiction. You can either have the one no. or you can have the other one. You can't have both and just say, you know, in one, in one instance it will play out like this, but in the other instance it will actually play out mm. the other way. We think that is not that easy as you claim here. Also, we heard enough rebuttal on you for first opposition, that's why I would like to move on to the extension that we just heard here. There is one mistake in the analysis that Pierre just brought you, and that is the question, who decides whether we go to war or not, and who needs nationalism and who needs to feel hatred. It is not the soldiers that decide that. So taking it away from the soldiers during combat will not change anything, and we won't have any of the wonderful positive effects under your eight sub-points that you tried to bring us. Because, because generals, first of all, do not make the decisions. So, um, first of all. Second of all, it's politicians that make the decisions based on how the citizens and the population feels. If you think of World War I, everyone was war crazy. Artists, intellectuals, the whole population, the politicians. Taking away fear from soldiers in, in a situation like that doesn't change anything of what he talked about. It doesn't change any of the mechanisms that he talked about. Because that is still possible. You can still incite fear, you can still incite nationalism in the larger audience. The politicians can still feel that. So that is not changing anything, the reasons why we go to war. No. And all the negative things are still possible um, under what you just said here. Let me talk about narratives first. And this is a point I would like to make where we accept what first government told you. We accept that everything is going to be beautiful, like the Deputy Prime Minister said, they come home, there is no trauma, which I'm going to contradict in my second point, because we believe that is still going to happen, because you still have memories, and that is the basis for trauma. But let's assume that it is that easy as he points it out here, and we have no trauma, no fear, no bad memories of what happens under war. We lose the only, the only witnesses to what happens in war and to all the ugly things that happen in war. If you go to the museum here of Croatian history and you look at the wonderful paintings that propaganda artists <coughs> painted during World War I that were put there by the government, then you see only nice pictures of war. You see camaraderie, you see the soldiers next to the sea. You never see awful pictures. But if you think of the progression that we've made in the past, it was always, especially after World War I, where everyone was thinking this is going to be wonderful, it's going to be a quick war, it's going to be a successful war, and we're going to be proud and brave. But then they went to war and actually saw what war meant. Now, if we apply and accept what first government says and accept the mechanism and the outcome, we say this is nothing a democratic state should want. Because we need to have this discussion after war. We need to know how we fought the war, if we actually fought it the way that we said we would fight, if we stuck to our principles and to the human rights we wanted to uphold during, for, through our soldiers and so on and so forth, we will not have that critical narrative and this critical um, telling of what actually happened if we take that away and the mechanism works. That's why we think it is bad, because we think in, as Western democracy, so we want to have less wars and we want to have more human wars. In order for us to be able to improve that, we need to understand what goes wrong and what actually happens during war, because there are more journalists, except maybe embedded ones, that are also controlled what they get um, to tell in the media. That's why we 
something that is absolutely against the interests of a democratic society that wants to move in the way that it has taken 60 years ago, 70 years ago, and that is absolutely hindering it. Before I go to the second point, um, first, quick. Talk about, well, talk about using soldiers as a means to end. You would rather have them traumatized coming back Ignoring the fact that you get all the benefits that you're talking about, because they will have the factual memories of what war is all about. Now you contradict yourself and we actually agree with you, because we think this is something that would rather actually happen. Because yes, you still have the memories. Now I would like to talk about my second point. Before I come to that, first something else. The wars that we fight today, if you look at them, what kind of a war is, your, is the US fighting in Iraq? What kind of a war is Israel fighting in the Gaza Strip? It is insurgency wars, where our soldiers have to go on the ground and fight like on the streets and in house battles. The worst thing that can happen in these wars that we mostly fight right now is for a soldier to be captured and being taken by the other side. You lose the war in the media as a state if you see your soldier being captured like the, the one that was decapitated two, two days ago. This is the worst thing for you as a state if your soldier is taken and instrumentalized and rightly so because your population doesn't want to see their soldiers and their sons dying. We, we say if you experience fear in such extreme situations in a dark street, in the night, somewhere where you don't know what is happening, where you don't know the surrounding. This is the one thing that will prevent you from getting into an extremely dangerous situation and being actually captured and then having all these negative effects that I just talked about. It is not in the interest of a state to make it more likely for its soldiers to become captured, lose the war on the national front because it is now in the media and we see, oh God, we are losing our soldiers, they are dying, he's being decapitated and everyone can watch it on YouTube. This is highly detrimental and awful for states, democratic states fighting wars when the population basically says we don't want to go on because it is too dangerous, we're losing our own citizens. And the last idea is the trauma. You will have soldiers that come back and then remember what they did with the fear now back in their emotional, um, in, in uh, feeling the fear again. How are they supposed to put this together, what they did in war and the way that they feel right now? We think this cre creates more trauma and more pro psychological problems and it makes it less likely for soldiers being able to be sent back into battle. For both those reasons, it is not in the state's interest to do this to its soldiers and that's why we say we should oppose. Thank you.